more love, more power, more of you in my life. More love, more power, more of you in my life. And I will worship you with all of my heart. I will worship you with all of my mind. I will worship you with all of my strength. You are my Lord. Oh, you What you need in your life this morning? More love. More power. because we know that without you we are nothing but in you we can do all things so we beseech you this morning to fill us with more of yourself to overflowing oh God make it evident in our worship make it evident in our lives make it evident oh Lord fill us with yourself fill us with yourself Fill us with your spirit. We love you, we love you, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Oh, oh. We give you praise because we will worship. I will worship. Lord, I'm a body, I'm a body, I'm a
Holy Spirit, you're welcome this morning. Let it be none of me and all of you as I minister your word to these, your people. In Jesus' name, dictate from heaven, O oh God. Amen. And amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. I love to worship. I love to worship it. Out of my heart, out of my soul, yeah. I love to worship. It's the seed of power in your life. Did you know that? Your worship is your greatest weapon. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Woo! Well, I don't want to get carried away because I can. And uh, I love that when I came and you were saying, there's no wall you won't kick down. Because as I was praying about what to share with you, this word came to me and I had some other things I wanted to say. So, you know, sometimes you just need God to confirm you're on track, right? And when I saw that, I said, okay, Lord, all right, all right, all right. I want to just share with you briefly this morning about the anatomy of a shout. Because I think that sometimes we get caught up. I, I'm a worshiper. Any worshipers in the house? I'm a worshiper. I just, I can, I can just go there and just go in and just stay there, you know. And and I love to dance and shout. But I think we need to understand where the power comes from in the shout. Because sometimes we associate loudness with power. But. Uh, <laughs> It takes more than loudness to have power. And so I, I, I just wanted to, to visit a wall in history, in biblical history uh, this morning and, and, and share with you a few principles that God shared with me about how to level walls in your life. Is that all right? Anybody got some walls? Anybody um, encountered some resistance in their life before? Felt that they were being hindered? Felt that they were being delayed and didn't quite know how to penetrate and get past where they were? to get to what they saw on the other side of their spirit anybody in the house know what I'm talking about this morning I'm there I'm there with you it says in Joshua chapter 1 and I'm just going to read the word for a minute and then we'll unpack it if that's okay with you but it said now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites now I want you to put a pin in that because I think that sometimes we're afraid but we don't know that the enemy is afraid amen it says no one was allowed to go out or in but the Lord said to Joshua I've given you Jericho its king and all its strong warriors you see sometimes the resistance you're feeling is the fear of the enemy of the damage you're gonna do when you get to the other side and so you need to know that you are actually in a good space in a good place because you are to be feared because of the Lord behind you amen it says you and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days and seven priests will walk ahead of the ark each carrying a ram's horn on the seventh day you are to march around the town seven times with the priest blowing the horns and when you hear the priest give one long blast on the ram's horns and have all the people shout as loud as they can then the walls of the town will collapse and the people can charge straight into the town so after Joshua spoke to the people the seven priests with the ram's horns started marching in the presence of the Lord blowing the horns as they marched and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed behind them and some of the armed men marched in front of the priests with the horns and some behind the ark with the priests continually blowing the horns do not shout Joshua said do not even talk Joshua commanded not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout so the ark of the Lord was carried around the town once that day and then everyone returned to spend the night in camp and then Joshua got up early the next morning and the priest again carried the ark of the Lord 
The seven priests with the ram's horns marched in front of the ark of the Lord, blowing their horns. And again, the armed men marched both in front of the priests with the horns and behind the ark of the Lord. All this time, the priests were blowing their horns. On the second day, they again marched around the town once and returned to the camp. And they followed this pattern for six days. Now, imagine yourself inside the wall. How you must have felt. All you hear is this horn blowing. And you hear the footsteps of thousands of people walking around your wall not saying anything now I got to tell you something because we like to shout so much but have you considered the power of silence silence disrupts the enemy he doesn't know what to do with silence because he doesn't know what you're thinking he doesn't know what your next move is gonna be you know in business transactions they say the person who speaks first loses have you ever heard that? All the business people in the house. I know there are many. When you're bargaining with someone, the first person that speaks loses the deal. Huh? If you're silent long enough, they'll say, okay, okay, I'll bring the price down. Because they don't know what you're thinking. They don't know if you're in or if you're out. They don't know what your next move is, and it makes them nervous. It becomes unsettling. And so the other person begins to shuffle for survival. And I believe that that's what was happening behind the walls of Jericho. They were like, what is this? This horn blowing, they're not saying anything. What's going to happen next? They didn't know. And this happened for six days in a row, consistently. It said they followed the pattern, the pattern that God had set. There's a pattern that God has placed in your life. And when you follow it consistently and persistently, it creates pressure against the enemy follow the pattern on the seventh day the Israelites got up at dawn and they marched around the town as they had done before and by now I'm sure that those inside the wall thought it was just another day perhaps they even relaxed a little pastor Jude because they said ah they've done this every day for six days they're not gonna do anything maybe we should just go and eat and just relax they're just marching that's all they're doing they're not doing anything else but this day was a day like no other day Hmm. It said that the seventh time around, as the priests sounded the long blast on their horns, Joshua commanded the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the town. Can you shout this morning? Because the Lord has already given you your victory. Last week you did your shakere. Shout out to the Lord with a voice of triumph. That's what they experienced that day. Jericho said, and everything in it must be completely destroyed, Joshua said, as an offering to the Lord. Remember why we're experiencing the victory, because we live to give him glory. Only Rahab the prostitute and the others in her house will be spared, for she protected our spies. Do not take any of the things set apart for destruction, or you yourselves will be completely destroyed. And so it goes on. When the people heard the shout, the sound of the ram's horns, they shouted as loud as they could. And suddenly, you know, there's a time in your life where God wants you to experience a suddenly. There are many suddenlies throughout the word. There's a time when the Midianites kept coming in every year and stealing the crops, right? Said, and suddenly... God raised up victory against the, the Midianites and their camels. Amen. God moves in the suddenlies. And that's why we have to be persistent and consistent and follow the pattern of God. Because we never know when he's going to strike. Because part of his strategy against the enemy is the suddenly. And sometimes he doesn't even let you in on it because you'll talk and mess it up. And so the suddenly comes swiftly. But when it comes, everyone knows that it was a move of God. Amen? 
And so it said, when the people heard the sound of the ram's horns, they shouted as loud as they could, and suddenly the walls of Jericho collapsed. The wall fell down in its place. It collapsed on itself. Now, you got to know about this wall. This wall was huge. People lived in the wall. That's how big the wall was. Houses were built into the sides of the wall, and chariots could run across the top of the wall. This was a major, major hindrance, and yet it was what God wanted them to get past to get to the promise. Sometimes he doesn't allow you to go around. He takes you through. And so he makes you speak and face the things that are hindrances in your life. He makes you face the things that seem to oppose you until you yourself experience the suddenly of God as he collapses it before your very eyes and orders you to march straight through. The walls were built to keep enemies out, but they helped God's people come in. Amen. It fell down in its place and the Israelites charged straight into the town and captured it. Now you know the backstory of this. Then Moses had been leading the people. They had been in the wilderness for a long time and Jericho was one of the last hurdles before they got to the promised land. And now Joshua has been appointed as a leader in the death of Moses. And Joshua is overwhelmed by the task and God tells him, be strong and courageous for I am with you only meditate on my word and practice to do what it says and I will be with you and you will get the victory simple instructions but how hard to follow you got to talk to yourself sometimes and say be strong and courageous for the Lord thy God is with me amen I remember there was a song we used to sing years ago be bold be brave for the Lord thy God is with thee you know that song right now that I'm really aging myself I am not afraid, no, no, no. I am not ashamed, no, no. I'm walking in victory. Remember that song? <laughs> anyway, you got to talk to yourself sometimes. You got to do the soul talk. And so it says that anyway, they had to get past this last hurdle. And God had told Joshua, I'm going to be with you. And he gave him specific instructions on, on how to get through Jericho. He says, I'm not going to get you around it. You're going to go through it. I'm going to bring the wall down, but this is what I need you to do. And so they sent the spies to check it out, to just get the lay of the land, right? And the spies go and they meet Rahab. Rahab lives in the wall. How many of you are living in your walls today? How many walls have you built in your life and you've settled in and decided that life, this is just the way it is and you're there, you're discontent. Rahab did not want to be a prostitute living in the wall, but she decided that's the best she had until the spies showed up. When God gives you a window of opportunity, you need to be discerning about here is my key to escape. Here is my key to victory. Here is my key to finally inhabit the dreams that God has placed in my spirit. Rahab recognized this was her out and she is also a prophetic uh, symbol of the church because she didn't just take herself she took her family it says when we believe on the Lord that we and our households will be saved amen perhaps she was the breadwinner of her family because she didn't leave them behind she said if I let you out will you save me and my family and the agreement was yes when you put down the red scarlet thread out of your window you will be saved and that scarlet thread of course symbolized the blood of Jesus Christ I love how everything in the word from the Old Testament to the new points to Jesus and so she told them oh don't worry the, the city is yours. The, everybody here is afraid. They've heard about how your God parted the Red Sea and destroyed the Egyptians on your behalf. And they are afraid. So the city is yours. Just come and get it. Ha! Will you look at a neighbor and say, the city is yours. That The victory is yours. The enemy is afraid. Just go and get it. You know, sometimes we're so worried about if God will do something he's going to do it and I don't know why in my spirit I feel this is for somebody this morning he's going to do it but it's actually on you now to believe and receive the promise and move when he says move and that's why the silence before the shout is so important 
because it's in the silence that you receive the instruction it's in the silence that you receive the affirmation it's in the silence that you receive what is going to happen next and how to proceed forward it's in the silence that you gain the artillery for the shout what walls have you built in your life and settled into even though that's not what you desire because you've decided that's oh well this is life this is all that's ever going to happen no 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 today i'm here to tell you the walls are coming down that you're shifting into your next season i just wrote a book it comes out next month actually i hope that uh remy at laterna will have it um it's called when shift happens say yes to your next are you ready for your next because sometimes we spend so much time wanting the change that when the change comes we don't know what to do with it because we haven't prepared for the change but if you truly believe god you're already planning your change you're already planning what you're going to do when you get that thing you've moved past will god do it to when god does it this is what i'm going to do with it Joshua selected 40,000 fighting men and 40 is significant trial number you know in the spirit things always seem to happen after the 40 40 days Goliath threatened the armies of Israel on the 41st day David slew him they marched 40 years in the wilderness and then stepped over in 41st Moses was on the backside of the desert for 40 years when we read the life of Joseph, it's after the, four, the 41st chapter is where Joseph moves from the jail into the palace. It's against this backdrop that the people of Israel decide to follow God's unusual instructions to bring the walls of Jericho down. Now scientists have said that sound waves can be used to levitate and move objects. Sound waves exert pressure when they hit a surface, but the effects are usually too small to notice. But if the intensity is cranked up high enough, sound has the ability to counteract the effects of gravity. That's what science says. Now I'm going to add to that the spiritual element. Let's look at the power of a shout spiritually, that when we combine God's super with the world's natural, we get supernatural results. As I've said before, we tend to associate power with shouting, but we need more than volume to move the mountains in our lives. And I believe that the exercise of walking six, seven days around how long round this mountain God how many times must I tread in the same place how many times will I go through the same thing over and over again when will the cycle break in my life and yet they did not know that the pressure of the consistency of their march was unearthing things I lived in Chicago for a time and they had this thing every summer um, taste of Chicago and thousands would descend to the same park to walk and walk and walk and so what happened was after a while the pressure of thousands of people walking began to um, kill the roots of the trees in the area and all the trees started to die and they couldn't figure it out for a while and then they realized that the vibration of the thousands of feet were literally going underground and vibrating and traumatizing the roots of these trees can I tell you that the consistency of your walk traumatizes the enemy? That when you decide to walk in holiness persistently and consistently, it traumatizes the very roots of the seeds that the enemy has tried to plant in your life and they have to wither and die. That I declare this morning for every root that you think is still active in your life, that it is plucked up and twice dead. shout to is the issue are we shouting at the enemy or are we shouting unto the Lord because who we shout to makes the difference the shout had power because the process of God was at work behind it the process required something of the people amen in order for him to respond to their shout the shout literally shifted the foundation of their opposition and leveled what hindered them from moving forward the shift from wondering and surviving to the sh and they shifted to overcoming gloriously 
That's available to you this morning as you follow the move of God. The first instruction they got was to follow the directions and to not just know what God said, but know what God is saying. Because sometimes we get stuck on one element of what God said and miss all the follow-up instructions that will get us to what he said. Amen? But they also had to purify themselves. When we want victory, we don't get victory any old how. We have to be in agreement with God. They were asked to purify themselves. Before they even went to the wall, they had to purify themselves. They had to submit to God, resist the enemy so that he would flee from them. Amen? Make sure to cleanse your life and keep your heart pure and stop doubting, it says in, in, in James. Amen? So purification is also part of the process that builds the power of your shout. There's a dying to self. They had to walk through the waters of Jordan and God parted it for them because they could have drowned, but God parted the waters and they were willing to die to themselves and come alive in God. He was the one that parted the waters. And then they set up a memorial of what God had done for them because sometimes life is hard. And you have to build your faith uh, trophy case, I call it. And that day they built altars. Every time they overcame one thing, they would take rocks and they would stack them and build an altar as a memorial unto God. What is a rock? It is a hard thing. Today I challenge you to take the hard things in your life and build an altar with them and sacrifice praise on that altar unto God because every hard thing there is making you. It's not breaking you. It's making you. Then circumcise your heart. This is the covenant that we make with God. They were circumcised after that. After they washed themselves, they were circumcised. And it was at this point that they had an encounter with God. Oh, that we would have an encounter with God. Face to face. That his glory would meet us where we are. And we would sense his presence in a palpable way and know that he has visited us and that we've literally heard his voice. This is what gives us the power to keep moving forward. This is what gives us the power to remain consistent and persistent. Never give in. Never give up. Then get your marching orders because when God encounters you, he doesn't come and just pat you on the head. He has marching orders for you. He has instructions and he's waiting for you to get silent so that you can receive them. Remember that what he says he will do in spite of what the circumstances look like. You know, I think that sometimes God delights in making things difficult so he can show off. God is a show off. He makes it so impossible so that when you get it, you have to say, it had to be God. Because our inclination is pride. To say, oh yeah, you see what I did, huh? God said, no, I did that. So he makes it impossible first. And then he delivers and we go glory to God. Remember the power of your surrender. The power of surrender is powerful. It feels weak, but it's not. Because when we are weak, God is made strong. And then they had to walk it out. They didn't know when the walls were going to come down, but they just kept showing up. Will you just keep showing up? It might not happen today. It might not happen tomorrow. But the seventh day in your life is coming. The seventh day is coming. And when you don't know what to say, say nothing. You see, there was a silence as they walked. Nobody was grumbling. No one was complaining. No one was asking, when is God going to do this? No one was saying, how long am I going to have to march around this wall? How long, Lord? How long, Lord? How long, Lord? No, they just walked in silence. Perhaps they all were meditating on this particular word that had been given to them by God. But they walked in silence. And the only sound was the sound of the priest's horns. And the sound of their feet. But when they were released to shout. 
Oh my. They came alive. It had been stored up for a while. There's a song that Martha Munizzi sings called Till the Walls Come Down. And it says, you're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. You're my sword and shield. You are my strength. And this one thing I'm confident, you will fight for me. You are my defense. I will not back up, not back down, state my claim, stand my ground, shout for joy till the walls fall down. I'm going to praise him till the walls fall, till the chains break. Praise him till the enemy's under my feet. Praise him till the walls come down. Are you able to be silent and not complain? Are you able to just keep walking it out? Are you able to just keep showing up confident? that the Lord has given you the land, whatever that land is. If it's the land of your relationship, if it's the land of your finances, if it's the land of your professional life, if it's the land of your family home, if it's the land of, of fruitfulness in your womb, whatever the land is, today I want you to rise to your feet and I want you to bow your heads in silence for seven seconds. And in that seven seconds, I want you to covenant with God that God, no matter what my situation looks like today, I'm going to keep showing up. I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to keep marching. I'm going to keep maintaining my holiness. I'm going to keep practicing godliness. I'm going to keep worshiping you. I'm going to keep on keeping on until you come through for me. I won't complain, I won't question, I won't doubt, I won't fear, I won't get angry anymore. I lay it all at your feet this morning and I trust you. I trust you to shatter this wall in my life. I trust you God to bring the walls down, the walls of hindrance, the walls of delay, the walls of resistance, the walls of opposition. I call them down in the name of Jesus this morning because I trust God that you are God and that you will move and create a suddenly for me. I give you praise. I give you honor and to affirm and seal this commitment to you that I make this morning. I lift a shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give him praise. something break this morning you should have felt something get shattered you should have felt something being uprooted give the Lord a praise yeah hallelujah I don't know what we're going to do with this atmosphere, but I, I just sense walls 
we're, we're just coming, crumbling down as you, as you scream. We're about to break bread and I think at some point we would need to have you up again, ma'am, if you don't mind. Yeah. Just, um, because I sense that Some, some of us have circled around our walls for for too long and we've lost our shout. Two nights ago, the Lord sort of tapped me up and said, do you, do you believe in me? Do you believe? And I said, yes, Lord. It's like I heard it three times. Do you really believe? So perhaps you've lost your shout of faith. Perhaps at some point it seemed like you shouted and the walls did not come down. But this morning there is a restoration. There's the restoration in the house and there's a redeeming power of the Holy Spirit. And we're trusting the Lord God that He would give you the power to start again. How many of us really need strength this morning? You just need strength. You just need to draw strength. You sense there's a shifting but you you know you need strength to come into the new the lord has given us a tool this morning it's the power of a shout help me with that song i say in christ alone my hope is built in christ alone my hope is found lift up your hands let's worship him together my strength, my soul, this cornerstone, the solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm, what heights of love, what depths of peace, when fear when striving seems my comfort my all in all here in the love of Christ I stand in Christ alone who took on flesh. Who took on flesh. Was the fullness of God. Fullness of God in hell. Blessed be. This gift of love. This gift of love. Never rompe. And righteousness. Scorned by the ones he came. To see Prata to Sakaya, still on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrong of God was satisfied for every seed on Him.
Follow your lead, and thereafter, I will worship a bit and allow the spirit of God to do that He wants to do in the life of His people. Is that okay, man? Praise the Lord. I think sometimes we've watched so many movies where it looked so easy and beautiful and graceful when Christ died, but it was wrenching. It said He was beaten beyond recognition. And the blood flowed freely. That blood that he willingly shed for us. We take it this morning in commemoration of what he did for us. As you take the element of the wine. I pray that you would stop and really thank him this morning. Just remember. And that when you take the bread. That you remember that his body was broken for you brutally there's nothing that you can sacrifice greater than what he sacrificed for you your obedience is not a brownie you know for you to to plead your obedience is your thank you to god when we walk in holiness when we sacrifice the things that our body craves it is the sacrifice that he made for us on the cross and the holy spirit is there to empower us to be obedient but remember that every act of obedience is a thank you god for what we see before us this morning so as you take the bread thank you lord for allowing your body to be broken for me Today I take this in commemoration of what you did and I pray that my own brokenness would be a sacrifice that is pleasing unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, God. And now, Lord, we partake of this this morning in commemoration of the blood that you shed for us. Let that blood be a work of purification in us continually and consistently. As we agree to lay down our own lives for your sake, to bring you glory and praise. Thank you, Father God, for breaking your son for us. Today, we drink this in thank yous and commemoration of what was done. In Jesus' name, amen. We bless you, Lord, this morning. We take a moment. Because there's healing virtue in the communion. It releases healing. It releases deliverance. It puts us in remembrance of the victory that was promised yes, for the Lord. cross. Yes, Lord. We receive it this morning, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you for it. We give you praise. Yes, this morning, I add to that the healing virtue the healing virtue to heal wombs to heal cancers to heal infections to heal all manner of infirmities in Jesus name to heal the minds that are troubled minds that are troubled with being overwhelmed by life debt uh, the things that threaten your well-being and your security we bring that all down and we surrender it at the foot of the cross this morning. And we thank you, God, for the victory that your crucifixion brought, the victory that your resurrection brought. You overcame it all. You went down into hell and you snatched the keys of hell and death as a sign that we too overcome with you now. And we give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. There in the ground His body lay Light of the world by 
darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again. to say one thing pastor jude mentioned it he said some of you have lost your shout the way you get your shout back is to shout i'm gonna tell you why we have feelings but our feelings should not have us amen your emotions come from a thought and if you follow that thought it entrenches itself as an attitude and it becomes a confession and then it becomes an action. So what has to happen is the thought has to change and you have to command, you have command over your mind, over your heart, over your spirit. Okay? The, 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 the spirit is subject to the prophet. You're all prophets. You may not all prophesy, but you're prophets in Christ. Amen? You prophesy over your body. You prophesy over your own life. You prophesy to yourself. You prophesy what God said, not what you think, not what you feel. And when you decide to shout, guess what happens? Your body has to obey your decision. Your emotions have to obey your decision. And so you decide to shout. In spite of how I feel, in spite of what I'm thinking in the moment right now, I will shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. And watch what happens. It begins to pull everything in your system into alignment to line up with what you have decided. Remember that you are the master. God has given you authority. You are the head, not over just the enemy, but over yourself. You are above and not beneath. And so a decision has to be made. It's a decision. It's not a feeling. It's not based on feeling. Come out of your feelings. Don't live in your feelings. Make godly decisions according to the word of God. 
And let's face it, what choice do we have? It's all we've got. So go big or go home. That's what I always say. God, either you do what you say you can do, or what's the point? Have you ever said to God, what's the point? But the point is, he is God. And he moves when he decides to move. And yes, it didn't happen yesterday. It didn't happen a month ago. But you suddenly could be in this moment. No, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear that because you would have been more excited. You suddenly can be right now. You suddenly can be right now. You suddenly can be this moment. Lift up your voice as the whole soul. Let yourself hit the heavens. I believe you all. Yes. Shout out to God. Shout out to God. Do I have to believe us now? Yes, I can. Well, I love you. Walk in victory. No matter what you see, trust me, it's coming. You know, I got to tell you this quick story. I met this young lady many years ago. When I met her, she was in a wheelchair. She had been hit by a drunk driver at the age of 19. I met her, hmm, maybe in her. 20s we ended up doing um, a, a conference together and uh, later we went on to do a television show that you can all now see it starts in September tct.tv you can stream it or put it on your phone but Delia is an amazing gospel singer and she sat in that wheelchair ladies for all of you who are killing yourself losing weight and everything married a beautiful bishop in that wheelchair all right so one year i moved to ghana and i hurt my leg and it's miraculously healed so i called delia to tell her what has happened to my leg and she's laughing hysterically on the phone i said why are you laughing she says you you haven't seen the news have you i said what's going on are you walking she said why did you ask me that question i said because the lord told me you were going to walk several years ago i just never told you because i i thought maybe you were tired of people telling you that she's walking 23 years she spent in a wheelchair 23 years and can I tell you I never met a happier person in a wheelchair and she just happened to go to an ordinary prayer service one day and they prayed over her and she started feeling funny in her legs and next thing she shot up out of the chair so we actually filmed the first season of the show with her in her wheelchair and we had to build a set around her wheelchair because she wasn't comfortable sitting on soft surfaces the second season when we went to film she was pushing the wheelchair with her luggage in it oh laughing my God, de la 23 years but suddenly suddenly ha! suddenly suddenly, suddenly her husband bought her some six inch Louboutins to say, the world walks better than me. Ah, she said the next day she was afraid to get up because she thought it was a dream, but she's still walking. I'm here to tell you this morning, I've witnessed miracles in my life and I impart prophetically the power of the miracles of God to you this morning because I've touched them and because I've touched them, they can touch you. I have a friend 52 years old I she disappeared for about three months I couldn't find her. I said what's going on is something happening with your marriage she said come and see <laughs> there she sat pregnant 52. no IVF no nothing just the power of God on her body She's pregnant not with one two God gave her double for her waiting 52 years old naturally she gave birth and she showed me her prayer journal 
how long she had prayed for these babies till the pages were all brown with the oil from her fingers. She had touched those pages so many times praying for those babies. Can I just tell you this morning that God knows best and that our lives are not about us. It's about bringing glory to God. And so he likes to set up difficulties to defy the odds and silence the naysayers in your life and show off. And those are the suddenlies that he does in your life where those breakthroughs come and they are unexplainable because they're only done by the power of God. So be expectant. So how long have you waited? Not long enough. God suddenly is going to visit you. I promise you this morning. God bless you. I love you all so much. Come on, put your hands together for Pastor Michelle. Peter, come help her. I thought you would clap with a bit more.